Hey, it's Hugo Michaela here. Uh, we're going to talk about packet radio today, specifically TCP IP. We're going to hook up this ICOM 7100 to the ICOM 7100 in our car, and we're going to see if we can get some TCP IP going across there, some ping packets, we might try some web requests, might even try to get onto the internet within our uh, license limitations, of course. Um, and I'm going to show you two different ways to do this, one using the Linux kernel KISS attach, and the other using a third-party tool called TNC attach. So two different ways that we can achieve the same outcome um, and basically have a little play around and see what we can do. So I'm gonna get this radio set up and then we'll jump in the car, we'll go for a quick drive, we'll get a, I don't know, a couple of kilometers away and see if we can make this all work. Now before we go too far, I wanted to just mention that this is all held together with IP networking, so you do have to have a pretty good concept of how static routes work and how to configure them and how to set them up. So this is a diagram of how my network works, and you'll notice there that the Raspberry Pis are acting as routers. So there's a small amount of configuration you have to do to make Raspberry Pis routers, it's just a essentially a one-liner. Um, but you do need to configure all the static routes on your home router and remote router. So our first step is to set up a direwolf. I'm not going to go into configuration because it's quite uh, radio specific. Then we're going to do a kiss attach. After our kiss attach we do a kiss params to set that up for direwolf. And then the only thing we need to do that's sort of separate from a like connecting to a BBS is we need to configure an IP address on the interface. So we use the if config command with AX0 being our port. We supply some IP addresses. I'm using 192.168.1.1 in this case. And we set a subnet mask. And that's pretty much it for setting up AX25 networking. Okay, so now that we've got KISS Attach set up, let's go for a quick drive out a couple of k's away and see if we can connect to it remotely from the car. We're at the Warren Jury Lookout. I love this place because it has these stunning views of the city just down here. So I'm not sure if you can see that in the uh, GoPro wide angle lens, but somewhere down there is Melbourne. That's quite nice. Get all the bird noises. All right, so let's have a look at what we're gonna do in the car. To connect back to home, we're just gonna use one of these um, diamond 2 and 70 antennas. Home actually has the exact same antenna, so this is a really nice, fair, and even balanced system. ICOM 7100, I'll go through the config in that, and let's get started. All right. So in the car, we just need to tune this to what we've got at home, which is 144.900, if I remember correctly. Hopefully I remember correctly. Uh, we're in FM data, and to connect to Direwolf, we're using the USB audio interface that's built into the ICOM 7100. This will work with digi-rigs and signal links and all of that sort of stuff. The important thing to note though with the ICOM 7100, the fastest you'll be able to achieve over the USB audio interface is uh, 1200 board. If you're going to do 9600 board, you need to use the data in connector at the back. And that's a whole other story and that gets complicated. So let's ignore that for the moment and we're just going to look at the 1200 board. So I'm going to grab my laptop and uh, start setting up this side. So the configuration for the other side is pretty much the same, 
The only difference being that we change the IP address so we have a different IP address on the other side. So in this example I'm using 192.168.1.2. Just forgive my typos and <laughs> messing stuff up, it's a bit hard to type in the car. So the next thing we do is we run a ping and we set the count quite low and the interval quite large uh, just because the radio takes a long time to, um, to send and receive. And we can see we got one back at about 8 seconds. Now if we set the interval to something more reasonable like 5 seconds, we get to see a ping packets come back reliably. Alright, so we can see we've got some ping packets going across, we've got like a uh, typical time of about 5 seconds, so it's not, it's not great, but we can actually push a little bit of data across this. So these are just ping packets, they don't contain a lot of data, um, but we can actually have a pretty large MTU which will give us a, a decent flow of data. So let's try loading up a really basic website that I just set up, um, just to test this out. I set up this little HTTP server using uh, Python, and it just has a really basic uh, HTML page. Uh, even then, it still takes quite a bit of time to load. And this is because mostly the TCP handshake in modern browsers are expecting a really quick connection, so they flood out a ton of packets, and it takes a while before it gets through the queue. But eventually it does connect and does uh, load the page. Unfortunately, it doesn't show the picture that's meant to be on there, that never loads. Um, but I do try right-clicking on it and opening it manually, um, which partially loads. Uh, it took many, many minutes, so the footage you're going to see has been sped up by eight times. Alright, so that was the kiss attach method. Uh, let's try the TNC attach. Installing TNC attach is pretty straightforward. You basically just have to follow the instructions on the GitHub page. It involves just installing build essentials, git cloning the repo, running make and make install, and you'll have a working TNC attach install ready to go. For TNC attach, there's a few parameters. Specifically, uh, you get to set the IP address in the attach command. You can set your call sign and an interval to ID. Um, and you can also set up the TNC using KISS TCP, which I've done here on localhost and port 8001. So let's try the browser test again. This time using TNC attach. While it's loading, um, I just want to mention that TNC attach doesn't use AX25, it's its own thing. Um, and because of that, that's why you have the settings for identification, because your call sign isn't included in every single uh, frame that gets sent across. Uh, the advantage of that, though, is it's much more efficient as there's less AX25 overhead dealing with sending the packets across. And as we can see, the web page loads uh, quite quickly. And I'm just going to let this play out in real time. I'll add some music for you to listen to while it's loading, because it's still not quick. But we actually get the image to load this time.
Now the last thing I just want to show you is that you can also use this to get out the internet if you configure it correctly. Uh, most of the internet is encrypted with HTTPS so you need to pick websites that don't have encryption if you want to ensure that you stay within the amateur radio license rules. Uh, in this case I'm using textfiles.com because it has no HTTPS and I'm just loading up a basic ASCII art text file. So there you have it. Two ways that you can do TCP IP over amateur radio. The KISS attach way and the TNC attach way. Both work pretty well, um, but TNC attach is a little bit more efficient, so it is a little bit quicker.